As I have mentioned in the previous video, this is the part 2 of our lesson on the experimental designs. In the previous video, pinag-usapan natin doon the difference between between subjects design and within subjects design. For this video, we are going to be more technical about the designs. We are going to discuss potential problems in within subjects design and between subjects design. Kasi kapag pumili na kayo ng design, whether you are going to do a between or a within, you have to be aware that there are potential problems that you will encounter kung ano man yung design na gagamitin mo. And a good experimenter anticipates these problems and and at the same time, gagawa siya ng mga steps on how to deal with these problems even before the experiment runs. So, ano ba yung mga iba't ibang mga problema that you may encounter if you are going to use a between subjects design or a between subjects design? Let's first talk about potential problems in between subjects design. One of the first things that you will encounter as a problem in a between subjects design is unequal group characteristics. Ibig sabihin, there is always a tendency that there will be key differences among your different groups in your experiment. So, the people in the first group will be different from people in the second group who may have certain differences from people in the third group. Marami silang mga individual differences across different groups. And if you can remember our lesson on confounding variables, this is a problem. Because again, in an experiment as much as possible, we would like our participants to be more or less the same with each other across different groups in certain attributes. Yun yung tinatawag nating control variables. But since the design of your experiment is a between subjects design, iba't ibang mga grupo in different groups, there is always a tendency that there will be certain degrees of inequality among the groups in your experiment which can lead to confounding variables later on. But the good news here is, itong problemang ito in between subjects design can be solved using two techniques. The first thing you can do to deal with this unequal characteristics or unequal group characteristics is called random assignment. Pinag-usapan na natin to in our previous lessons, di ba? In random assignment, you are going to use the fishbowl technique where you are going to randomly assign a participant to one of the groups in your experiment para ma-equalize yung certain attributes that you would like them to be equal. Anong tawag doon? You call that random assignment. But you have to remember that random assignment does not ensure group equivalent. Sa Tagalog, hindi 100% gumagana ang random assignment in equalizing certain group characteristics. Let me give you a demonstration to show this. Imagine, I have two IV levels in this experiment. And then, I have 10 participants. And then, I am going to apply fishbowl technique. I'll put their names in a fishbowl. The first person I pick goes to the first level. Second person I pick goes to the second level. Now, imagine, let's say, our control variable here is stress level, which means, more or less, we want people in the first level to have more or less the same level of stress as compared to people in the second level. So, ini-equalize natin yung stress levels dito across different groups. And how do we do that? We apply, let's say, random assignment. So, what happens? Fishbowl technique, that person goes to that level, another person goes to the next level, and so on and so forth. By the way, the number that you are seeing on inside the circle, yan yung measure nating stress level nila, no? Oo. Yan. So, yung mga numbers na yan, that refers to their stress level. Now, when the process is done, okay, the assumption here is more or less these groups of people between group 1 and group 2, they will have more or less the same level of stress. But is that really the case? One way to find out, kunin natin yung average ng stress levels of people in group 1 and compare it to the stress levels of people in group 2. If you get the average, the stress level of group 1 average is 77, stress level group 2 average 65.4. That is far away from each 
other. In fact, if this is the outcome of your random assignment, you should not continue your experiment and and uh, manipulate the IV. Kina kay hindi hindi pwedeng magtuloy ang experiment ng ganyan kalayo yung control variable natin. But one thing that I was able to show in this demonstration is there are times that random assignment does not work in equalizing your control variables. Kaya nga, another lesson that I would like you to learn here is you also need to develop the habit of still checking the baseline dependent variable even after you apply random assignment. So, ibig sabihin, hindi porket nag random assignment ka na, i-assume mo, na equal na yung control variables mo. Because again, there are certain times where even after you apply random assignment, your control variables are still not equal to each other. So for example, going back here, uh, if I'm going to diagram that, no, let's say, uh, nag-random assignment ka na, okay? Uh, randomly assigned to the first level and the second level, even before you apply the manipulation, magkakaroon ka pa rin dapat ng habit to check how is the control variable doing across these different levels? Hindi pwedeng puro ka na lang fit sa random assignment na, oh, nag-random assignment naman ako, therefore, my control variables are equal. Because as I, as I have shown you in the demonstration, there are times that random assignment fails to equalize the attributes that you want to be equalized. Now, another question here is, what if random assignment does not work? Is there another way to really ensure that my control variables across different groups will be equal to each other? The answer is yes. Meron pa namang isang paraan and this is called manual matching. In this technique, what we do is one subject in a group has a match in another group. Sinisigurado natin na bawat isang participant in one group, meron siyang equivalent na ganun din in another group. Meron siyang katapat, meron siyang kamatch na tao in another group. I think one good example or analogy I can use here to help you better understand this is when you play basketball games. Especially for those of you who are playing basketball, lalo na sa mga larong kalye, di ba? Usually, let's say, nagkayayaan maglaro ng basketball. There are 10 people on the court and you would like to play a 5 on 5 game, diba? For those of you who are playing basketball, before you start a game, you need to form two teams. Diba? That's how basketball works, diba? Kinakailangan merong team 1, merong team 2. Question, how would you form two teams if you have 10 players? The most obvious bet to answer that question is makikipag-jack and poi kayo. Diba? So you are going to find a person, uh, in, in a, another person, and then you are going to uh, pick, mag-jack and poi kayo. And then, how will you form two groups based on that system, win and lose? Based on the jack and poi. Diba? So kapag nakipag-jack and poi ka, you win, you belong to the win team. Or if you lose, you belong to the uh, losing team of jack and poi. So, magiging win-lose. So, group 1 will be the winners in jack and poi. Group 2 will be the losers in jack and poi. There you go. There you go. You will have two teams. Maluanag ba? Okay. So, the, the, the question here is, going back to the jack and poi technique, kanino ka makikipag jack and poi? Let's say, oh, I, I, want, I want to jack and poi with someone. Among the nine people I can see around me, Kanino ako makikipag-jack and poi for me to know if I am going to belong to the win group or to the lose group? Hahanap ka ng kamatch mo. You are going to play jack and poi with someone who is within your match. In terms of what? Well, in the most simplest uh, in the simplest way of doing it in street games sa uh, basketball, usually binabasa yan sa height. Diba? Sa height yan eh. So, kung halimbawa, maliit ka, you are going to have jack and poi with someone who is also within your height. So, that means a short player will have jack and poi with another short player, a taller player against another taller player. Why would you do that? Why would you jack and poi with someone who is your match in terms of your height so that later on when the two teams are formed, more or less, they will have same levels of height. 
So, kung merong maliit sa winning team, meron ding maliit sa second team, sa losing team, sa Jack and Poy. Kung meron silang uh, sentro, no, uh, very tall person in the first team, meron din silang sentro in the second team. You see how the system works, no? Th th that idea that I was demonstrating to you, that is considered manual matching. That's why, again, going back to basketball, one of the most interesting games that uh, people can watch, especially in professional sports, is the All-Star Game. Bakit ba napaka-interesting ng All-Star Game? Because this is one of the few moments in NBA where Team 1 is exactly matched with Team 2 in terms of height, in terms of talent, in terms of experience, match na match yung East versus West. So, maganda yung laban kasi it seems like they are very equal in terms of all attributes important to basketball. Height, speed, strength, match na match sila. Kaya most likely maganda ang laban in an all-star game. Now, let's apply that principle in psychological experiments. Going back to my knowledge, to my knowledge pill experiment, di ba? Halimbawa, our control var variable here is level of intelligence. Meaning, we would like the different groups... Uh, to have more or less the same level of intelligence. Diba? Whether you are in treatment group or control group, kusa natin, yung level of intelligence nila more or less pareho. So, what do we do? We apply random assignment, let's say. So, we apply fishbowl technique. First person we pick, pill taking. Second person we pick goes to non-pill taking or the control group. Okay? So, after that, anong sinabi ko kanina? Let's apply random assignment. Or, sorry, sorry. Let's still check kung pareho ba yung IQ even after you apply random assignment. Diba? You, you, check, you still check the baseline. So, even after you apply random assignment, tignan mo kung nag-equalize ba yung control variable mo. It seems like, based on the slide, hindi. And again, hindi mo dapat itulo yung experiment in this situation. Right? Magkakaroon ka ng confounding variable if you continued the experiment with this kind of grouping. Diba? Doon sa treatment group mo, average IQ is 90.8. Control group, average IQ is 66. That will lead to confounding variable. So, what do you do? What does this mean? Your random assignment did not work. And so, you decide to use the second technique, manual matching, to really ensure that the control variable their IQ will be more or less the same before you apply the manipulation. So, let's apply matching in this case. Sa manual matching, papakialaman mo na hindi ka na magra-random assignment. You will be the one as the experimenter to put someone in either of the levels. Let's say, I will put this guy sa pill-taking group. I will put this girl sa non-pill-taking group. Okay? Sino ang kamatch ni 94? C... 95. Sino ang kamatch ni 90? C. 89. Sino ang kamatch ni 60? C. 62. Diba? I, I know, you, you already get the point, no? Hahanapan mo lang sila ng kamatch. Sino yung pinakamalapit na match niya? Ilalagay mo lang yun sa kabilang grupo. So, kung meron kang 55 dyan, meron ka rin kamatch niyang 51. Kung meron kang 67 dyan, meron kang kamatch dito na 70. So, after you apply the entire process of manually matching members in both groups, anong gagawin mo? You check again the baseline kung nag-equalize na ba yung control variable natin which is the IQ. So, when you do that, in the pill-taking group or the treatment group, the average IQ is 78.3. In the non-pill-taking group, the average IQ is 78.5. Boom! This is a good one. Now, you can proceed to apply your IV and then compare the results. Diba? Na-equalize mo na yung control variable mo dito which is the IQ. And how did you do that? By applying manual matching. Now, most students would ask me this question, how close should the scores be? Limbawa, uh, sino ang magiging kamatch ni 100 hanggang anong scores? Well, the rule is wag lalagpas ng 5 units. Diba? Kung 100, Pwede niyang kamatch hanggang yung nasa 95. 
Pero yung 96, sobra na raw yun, no Hindi lalagpas ng 5 units. Now, this is what you call a between subjects design match group design. So, huwag kayong maguguluhan. No? Yung between subjects design, meron pa siyang mga subclasses. And this one that I was showing you, it's called a match group design. Why is it called a match group design? Because we manually match the groupings of the IV levels in this type of experiment. Pinakialaman mo as the experimenter yung, yung grouping ng mga participants. That's why it's called a match group design. You manually match them across the different groups. Now, why not use manual matching all the time? Diba? Very logical naman. Edi, edi mag-manual matching na lang tayo all the time. Huwag na tayong umasa sa random assignment. The thing is, um, pwede mo namang gamitin yung manual matching kung kailan mo gusto, but it's not possible in all situations. Like, for example, if you have a large number of participants, let's say 5,000, it is so hard and very time-consuming for you to manually match each one with another person in another group na meron kang 5,000 subjects. ba? Diba? Unless you are willing to do that 2,500 times. ba? Diba? O. Oh. Pero kung meron ka namang assistant, ba? Diba? O. Oh, pwede ka rin naman mag-manual matching with 5,000 participants. no? Pero kung konti lang naman yung participants mo, this, may na, this will not be a problem. You can just use manual matching kasi konti lang naman yung participants mo. Or, kung talagang sumasampalataya ka sa random assignment, pwede rin naman. But again, don't forget, even after you apply random assignment, you still check if your random assignment work or not. Oh, another option pa pala, no, na hindi ko nabanggit kanina, let's say, you applied random assignment and then you check the control variable if they were equalized and you found out that they did not equalize. The the control variables are still far from each other. Ano yung pwede mong gawin other than manual matching? Ulitin mo yung random assignment. Kung baga sa baraha, balasahin mo ulit. ba? Diba? Hanggang sa ma-achieve mo na yung gusto mong level of equality between group 1 and group 2. So that's another thing that you can do. Repeat random assignment. So in summary, when we talk about between subjects design, meron yan dalawang variants. Number one, between subjects design, randomized design, and between subject design, match group design. Yung sinabi ko kanina, yung nag-manual matching tayo, it's called a BSD match group design. Again, why? Because we manually group the participants in level 1 and level 2. Pinakialaman natin yung grouping nila. Pero doon sa BSD randomized design, we did not do that. We just relied on random assignment to group them according to the levels. So, yan yung dalawang klase ng between subjects design. Randomized design and match group design. Alright? So, that is on the between subjects design. Let's now move on to within subjects design. Ano ba yung mga common problems that you might encounter when you run an experiment using within subjects design? Medyo mas marami kang problema ang kahaharapin in within subjects design. There are three common confounding variables. Let's start with common problem number one in within subjects design. Let's say you have this question. Which between the two teaching strategies, A and B, is more effective in increasing grades of section excess students? So, if this is your experimental question, ano yung IV? IV natin is teaching strategy. Levels, you have two levels, strategy A and strategy B. Dependent variable will be grades. Operational definition natin, bahala kayo dyan kung mamimigay ka ba ng exam, written exam, oral exam, or any um, test that will measure their grades. Ano yung mga control variables natin dito? Definitely, I would say, intelligence or IQ. Kinakailangan more or less equal yung students in A, teaching strategy A, and students who will experience teaching strategy B. Okay? So, those are the basics in this experiment. Now, Imagine that we are going to use a within subjects design. Again, anong ibig sabihin ng within subjects design? One group will undergo all the IV levels. Okay? Step 1, anong gagawin natin? Let's apply teaching strategy A and then you give them a test and then you score. Napipicture nyo? No? So, those students, one group of students will experience teaching strategy A. 
and then after they experience strategy A, they will be given a test and then measure their dependent variable. Step 2, you apply teaching strategy B. Same group of students will undergo strategy B and then you give them a test and then you get the score, the dependent variable. And then step 3, you are going to compare the scores that they got from A and they got from B. Ikukumpara mo kung sino o kung anong strategy yung mas mataas yung grades nila. Now, let's come up with a hypothetical result. Halimbawa, ito yung result. According to the results, they got higher scores when they experienced strategy A than when they experienced strategy B. Therefore, your conclusion is strategy A is more effective than strategy B. But knowing that you have used a within subjects design, I can still challenge that conclusion. Paano ko i-challenge yan? I could say, it's possible that strategy B is still more effective than strategy A. Posible yun. Hindi lang lumabas sa data. Iba lang yung pinakita ng data. But it's really possible that strategy B is more effective than A. Hindi lang siya lumabas sa data. Bakit? Kasi merong confounding variable. Okay. Ano yung confounding variable na yun? It is possible given the nature or given the design of the experiment remember it is a within subjects design it is possible that subjects were already mentally tired by the time they experienced teaching strategy b so mas maganda naman talaga mas effective naman talaga yung strategy b it's just that when students were already in strategy b remember they all they came from strategy A. Bago sila pumasok sa strategy B, na-experience nila yung strategy A. So, nakinig na sila doon, nag-pay attention na sila doon, tines na sila doon. So, pagpasok nila ng strategy B, they were already mentally tired. So, they were no longer as fresh as they were in strategy A. Therefore, given that idea, given that possibility, hindi na natin sigurado what caused lower grades in teaching strategy B. Bakit mababa yung scores nila sa strategy B? Is it because strategy B does not work? Pangit ba yung strategy B kaya mababa yung grade nila or pagod lang sila? Now we are no longer sure. Diba? We are now confounded whether the low grades in strategy B was caused by the strategy itself, meron talagang mali sa strategy or pagod lang ba talaga yung mga participants. In within subjects design, this is what you call fatigue effect. Diba? From the word fatigue, ibig sabihin pagod. This makes a lot of sense because in a within subjects design, you are repeatedly using one group of people to undergo all the IV levels. Therefore, there will always be a tendency that they will be tired. Kasi paulit-ulit mo silang ginagamit no? across different levels. So, habang paulit-ulit mo silang ginagamit, napapagod sila in the process. Very common in within subjects design. So, obviously, ang pinaka-antidote dyan para hindi mo ma-experience yung problem na ito is rest periods in between the different IV levels. So, to make sure that your participants will not be that tired across different levels, you will give them rest periods. Diba? So, they undergo first level and then before they undergo the second level, pagpapahingahin mo muna. You give them rest period in between and then after that, they move on to the second level just to get rid of the fatigue. But, it's not as simple as that. While they are resting, you also need to consider two things. Number one, the rest periods must be constant. Right? So, for example, um, if one person rested for five for 30 minutes all the other person in that experiment must also rest for 30 minutes no more no less hindi pwede yung isang participant nagrest ng 30 minutes yung isa 35 minutes yung isa 40 minutes magiging confounding variable na naman yan in the future that's why again this is where the importance of the laboratory enters the picture diba ideally after your participants are done with the first level, you will have a separate room in the laboratory where they are going to rest. Diba? So, lahat sila, lahat ng tao na pinaparest mo will be in one room so that all of them will will get exactly same amount of rest, 30 minutes, na control natin. Ang problema kasi kapag pinalabas mo pa ng laboratory yan, they will not come back on time, right? Some will come back early, some will come back late, making rest periods unequal with each other. 
but that's very important to make sure that the rest periods are constant. Number two, make sure that the participants are not rehearsing. Kasi minsan, yung mga participants, after they experience the first level in the experiment, they, they, they get challenge with the task. Feeling nila hindi sila magaling doon sa task na ginawa nila in the first level. So, while they're resting, they are doing something to practice themselves to do better in the second level. Hindi rin pwede yun. You know, kaya nga ang common na ginagawa in experiments, while they are resting, you are going to give them a distraction task. You are going to give them a task that is not tedious and at the same time, that task will prevent them from practicing the task that they will do in the second level. And again, this is where the importance of the laboratory enters the picture. Diba? Kasi kapag pinalabas mo yun ang laboratory, hindi mo naman kukontrol eh kung sinong magpa-practice, kung sinong hindi magpa-practice. Diba? So again, laboratory is very important in doing psychological experiments. Now, here's the challenge. And I think I already mentioned this in during the last time that we met live. Diba? Mahirap itong gawin in online experiments. Can you imagine? You don't have control of what's happening to them while they are in your experiment because they are not in the laboratory. They are in their places. They are in their homes. So let's say you are going to apply rest periods to them. You cannot control what they're going to do. Diba? Halimbawa, i-announce mo, okay, be back after 5 minutes because after 5 minutes, you will do another thing. Oh, that five minutes of break that you give them, iba-iba na yung gagawin nila. Some of them will watch Netflix, some of them will eat, some of them will take a nap. And then when they return to the second level na i-apply mo sa kanila, they are no longer the same in terms of the rest periods, which again may cause confounding variables in the future. Okay, so that's a very, very big challenge that we will face in doing your online experiment. So anyway, doing it right. So how, how, do, we, how do we apply this principle um, of rest periods in the example I have given you a while ago? Ganyan. Right? By experience mo yung strategy A, and then uh, kunin mo yung dependent variable and then after that, rest muna. Before they move on to strategy B, rest period and then doon mo ngayon i-apply yung strategy B and get the dependent variable. Now, how long should the rest period be? It's your call as the experimenter. Siyempre, depende yan sa kung gaano ka, ka tedious yung task na pinagawa mo in the first level. Right? So, a heavier or tedious task or heavy task that you let them do in one level will require longer rest period before they enter the second level. So, depende yan sa bigat nung task na pinapagawa mo. Ano? So, the rest period can span from minutes to hours or may ibang mga experiments, it can span to, to days or even weeks or even months. Depende nga yan kung anong klaseng manipulation or anong klaseng task ba yung pinapagawa mo in your experiment. Let's move on to confounding variable number two in within subjects design. Okay? Again, another hypothetical experiment. Let's say, we would like or we invented an energy drink called the Pink Bull Energy Drink. This is not only an energy drink but this is a drink that we claim to improve your memory speed. Mas mabilis kang makaka-memorize if you take the Pink Bull Energy Drink. Now, before we release this to the, to the market, we want to come up with a study that shows that this really works. So, how do we do this? We will run an experiment using 10 participants in a within subjects design. So, anong gagawin natin? First, these 10 participants enter the control condition. Diba? Ibig sabihin ng control condition, hindi sila iinom ng pink bull energy drink. Okay? Ang gagawin nila, you, they, they will answer a memory test. And then, we get the time that it took them to memorize the memory test. Siguro yung memory test natin dito, we give them a list of words that they need to memorize in a specific amount of time. And then, yung dependent variable natin dito is the time it took them to memorize all the words. So, hanggat hindi nila napa-perfect yung memory, yung list of words na binigay natin sa kanila, uh, 
uulit-ulit sila hanggang sa ma-perfect na nila then that's the time that we are going to to consider the total amount of time that it took them to memorize the list of words after that we apply rest period syempre nakakapagod mag-memorize so para hindi magkaroon ng fatigue effect let's apply rest period kayo nang bahala kung gaano katagal after the rest period they enter the treatment condition where this time they are going to take the pink bull energy drink and then they take the memory test and then you get the time that it took them to perfect or to master the memory test okay so i hope you can picture how the experiment run now again hypothetical result imagine we saw in the data that there was a lower time in the treatment group or in the treatment condition than in the control condition Ibig sabihin, mas mabilis nilang na-memorize or na-master yung list of words in the treatment condition compared to the control condition. Guess what? You will celebrate because this shows that this drink is effective in speeding up your memory. That will be your conclusion. But again, knowing that your experiment is a within subjects design, I can still challenge that conclusion. Maybe this drink does not really work. It only appeared in the data that it works, but it does not really work. In what way? Oh, ganito yan. So, pwede kong sabihin, posible kasi that the improvements that you observe in their performance in the treatment condition was due to the fact that they were already used to or that they are already familiar with the list of words that they were memorizing. So, hindi dahil sa pink bowl energy drink, pero dahil yon sa na-practice na sila sa pag-memorize. Naka-develop na sila ng mga strategies you know, on how to memorize words better by the time they entered the second condition. Therefore, we are now confounded, we are now confused. The effect that we saw in the dependent variable, faster time in memorizing list of words after they took the pink bull, is that because of the pink bull? Or is it because of the fact that they were already familiar with the task? Diba? Now we are not sure. Ito yung tinatawag nating practice effect. Practice effect is a condition or is a potential event in within subjects design where your participants are getting better and better in the task that you are letting them do in your experiment because they keep on doing it. Diba ganun naman talaga sa tunay na buhay, no? The more you repeat something over and over again, mas gumagaling ka doon sa task na yun. And that typically happens in a within subjects design kasi nga, you are only using one group of participants. So, you ask them to do a task over and over again. They develop skills in doing the task that you are asking them to do. Nagkakaroon tuloy ng practice effect which can potentially become a confounding variable. So, ano ang solusyon sa practice effect? Ang solusyon dyan, pwede mo dito gawin. You vary the task between the control condition and the treatment condition. Diba remember yung kanina, no? yung going back to how the experiment went. They did not take pink bull for the control condition. Walang pink bull na ininom. And then you gave them a memory test. Right? And then doon sa treatment condition, ganun din yung mangyayari except they will take the pink bull. Right? So they take the pink bull energy drink and then you give them memory test. Now, dito ngayon yung crucial. Okay? Ito yung crucial part ng experiment mo. Kailangan yung difficulty, yung items in memory test A are different from the items in memory test B. So, if you are using list of words here, you should make sure that you have two different list of words. Hindi pwedeng kung ano yung minemorize nila sa test A, ganun na ganun din yung minemorize nila sa test B because that will be familiarity. Maaalala nila yung mga words no, na namemorize nila sa test A. So, ang magandang gawin dyan, magkaiba ng words yung nasa test A versus yung nasa test B. But, even if the words are different in test A from test B, you should make sure that the difficulty of the words they are memorizing between test A and test B must be equivalent. Dapat equal lang yung difficulty. 
hindi pwedeng mas mahirap yung test A compared to test B or vice versa because that is a new confounding variable later on. Kinakailangan yung level of difficulty between test A and test B must be exactly the same. Yun yung tinatawag nating practice effect. So, kinakailangan magkaiba yung ginagawa across different levels pero the difficulty must be more or less the same. Let's move on to confounding variable number 3 in within subjects design. Halimbawa, we have this question. Does religion make someone happy? We would like to find out if religion can indeed cause someone to be happier. Now, our participants in this experiment, we make sure that their level of happiness is neutral. Ibig sabihin, yung average lang. Yan yung control variable natin here. Right? So, we want to make sure that this one group of people that we are going to form for this experiment have more or less same level of happiness with each other. And then, let's run the experiment. Okay? Halimbawa, nasatisfy natin yan. Lahat ng tao in the group that we, we form right now are in the average level of happiness. Now, we are ready to run the experiment. For the treatment condition, Ang gagawin nila for the first three months, they are going to practice a religion that we taught them. So, halimbawa, bago, bago mag-run yung experiment, tinuruan natin sila ng isang religion. You know, tinuruan natin sila ng mga rituals that they will do. Kung ano yung mga gagawin nila in that religion. No? And then, after the training on that, um, on that religion, for the first three months, they will practice that religion. Tama. And then while they're practicing that religion, along the way, we are measuring their dependent variable, which is their level of happiness. After three months, now we are ready to enter the control condition. Again, since this is a within subjects design, isang grupo pa rin to, no? yung, yung grupo doon sa treatment condition, siya rin yung grupo na papasok doon sa control condition. Okay? For the next three months naman, you will no longer ask them to practice the religion you taught them. Oh, lahat na pinagagawa nyo sa treatment condition, hindi nyo nagagawin. You just go with your life as it is without practicing the religion. And then, the same thing, let's measure their dependent variable, which is the level of happiness. So, I hope you can get how the experiment went. Fast forward, hypothetical result. According to the data, ito, kakaiba yung data dito, no? There is no difference between the treatment condition and the control condition. So, if you compare the level of happiness between those who practice religion and those who did not, it seems like wala namang pagkakaiba masyado yung level of happiness nila. You know, you cannot say that one is happier compared to the other condition. Yung data nila more or less the same. So, your conclusion would be religion does not cause happiness. Walang epekto ang religion sa level of happiness ng tao. That will be your easy conclusion. But then again, knowing the idea that you have used a within subjects design, ito yung challenge ko sa conclusion na yan. It's possible that practicing religion is really effective. Pwede naman talagang mas effective talaga yung religion eh. No, pwede meron talagang epekto yung religion sa happiness. It's just that, sa Tagalog, hindi lumabas sa data. The data is showing you that they're basically the same. Right? Hindi lumabas sa data. Question. Paano nangyari yan? You know? How can we prove that religion is effective in increasing happiness kahit na hindi siya lumabas sa data? Now, we need to backtrack here. Alright? This is what should have happened in your experiment. Should have, ibig sabihin, dapat nangyari. Okay. Imagine, if you remember, we started with participants with neutral level of happiness. Sila yan. Kaya nga yung mukha nila straight lang. No? Hindi sila malungkot, hindi sila masaya. That's our control variable. Now, what happens here? You, they entered the treatment condition where they practice religion for three months, right? And then, doon lumabas yung level of happiness nila. Oh, meron talagang epekto yung religion sa level of happiness. But look at what happened. Now they enter the, con the, the control condition. Right? 
ito yung dapat nangyari ha? this is what should have happened no so neutral they practice religion they become happier and then before they enter the control condition dapat bumalik sila doon sa previous state nila which is neutral happiness that what should have happened and then nung hindi na sila nagpractice nung religion hindi nagbago yung kanyang neutral happiness therefore your data will tell you that there is an effect of religion kasi nung nagpractice sila ng religion sumaya sila pero nung hindi sila nagpractice ng religion hindi nag-increase yung happiness nila which tells you that religion is effective in increasing happiness again this is what should have happened But here's what actually happened. Ito yung talaga yung nangyari. Meron kang participants with neutral level of happiness. You ask them to practice religion in the treatment condition, right? They became happy. But look at what happened. By the time, by the time they entered, before they entered the control condition, they were still happy. Di ba? yung happiness nila na nararamdaman nila from the religion that you asked them to practice was still there before they entered the control condition. So what happened was dahil hindi mo alam na pwede pa lang mangyari to, tinuloy mo pa rin yung experiment, right? So what happened? They entered the control condition. This time, you asked them not to practice the religion in the previous level. Oh dahil nga hindi sila nagpa-practice ng religion, guess what? At the end of the process, when you measure their dependent variable, you are still seeing the effect that they got from the previous condition. Making you conclude, di ba yan, no? yung may black arrow, you know? dyan na nanggagaling yung conclusion natin that there are no significant difference between practicing religion and not practicing religion. Di ba? Yan na yung nakita mo sa data mo. Di ba? Parang ang ibig sabihin niyan, whether or not you practice religion, ganyan ka pa rin kasaya. Yan talaga yung nangyari sa data natin. That's why we concluded that religion has no effect on our level of happiness. This is what you call contamination effect in within subjects design or in some textbooks. Ang tawag nila dyan is carryover effects. This is this happens when the effect of the IV on your dependent variable is still in your participants before they enter another level of your IV. Nakikerry over nila yung mga effects from one condition to the next condition. Kasi nga you are only using one group of participants. Nagagets nyo? Nadadala nila yung epekto ng previous condition sa next condition. So, how can we solve contamination effects? The, va- the following are some strategies that you can do. Number one, you apply control condition first. I think that's the most practical. ba? Diba? So, para hindi magkaroon ng carryover from treatment condition to control condition, doon ka muna sa control condition. Kasi sa control condition, ano naman eh, wala ka namang IV na i-apply doon eh. So, para pagpasok nila sa treatment condition, malinis sila from any effects. Kasi wala ka namang minanipulate sa kanila during the control condition. But the problem is, this does not apply all the time. Especially when your experiment has no control condition. ba diba? Papano kung lahat ng IV levels mo treatment condition? Lahat merong manipulation, lahat merong kang gagawin sa participants mo, it will not work. ba diba? O. Oh. So, magagawa mo lang yung number one if you have one treatment condition and one control condition. Number two, kapag puro treatment condition ka and you would like to get rid of contamination effect, you wait for the effect to subside. Sa Tagalog, antayin mo munang mawala. Antayin mong humupa yung epekto na meron yung mga participants mo from a previous condition. So, going back to our example a while ago, ang dapat mong ginawa dito is ganyan. Makita nyo yung change? You made sure that before you apply the control condition, bumalik na sila doon sa kanilang previous state, which is they are neutrally happy. Yan yung dapat nangyari. Hindi mo dapat tinuloy yung, yung experiment mo nung nakita mo that there was still an effect on their happiness before they entered the control condition. Dapat inintay mo munang mawala yung effect of religion on happiness before 
they entered the control condition. Question, how would you know? Paano mo malalaman na nawala na yung effect nung, nung previous condition bago sila pumasok sa next condition? Diyan nga papasok yung kahalagahan ng pagkuha ng baseline scores. Di ba, paulit-ulit kong sinasabi, you should make that your habit. Before you run the experiment, you develop the habit to always get the baseline scores first. Kasi itong baseline scores na ito, that you can see here, ito yung magiging basis mo for you to say later on kung nawala na ba yung epekto ng previous condition. Di ba? Imaginein mo, kung hindi mo kinuha yung baseline scores mo, you have no way of determining whether the participants in, whether the participants before they enter the control condition are already free from the effects that they experience in the previous condition. Kasi wala ka, hindi mo kinuha yung baseline score, eh, so hindi mo alam kung saan sila nag-start. Pero dahil alam mo yung baseline scores nila, now you can say whether kung nawala na ba yung epekto nung religion sa kanila o hindi pa before they enter the next condition. Okay? Again, baseline scores are very important. Always get the value of your dependent variable before you run the experiment. Kahit ano pa, pa man yan, no? ano, ano pa man yung dependent variable mo, is it memory, intelligence, speed, you always first get the baseline scores. Whether it's between subjects design or within subjects design, lagi mong kukunin yung baseline scores. Okay, so I hope you are understanding this. So anyway, so going back here, in our in our slide i hope you understand kung ano yung dapat ginawa dito no so kinuha dapat ng experimenter yung baseline score dito para malalaman niya later on kung wala na ba yung effect ng religion doon sa kanilang happiness before they enter the control condition that's what should have happened okay now let's move on to the last confounding variable that you may encounter when you use within subjects design, no? So mas marami talagang confounding variables kapag within subjects design, no? Ang tawag dito order effects. This commonly happens in within subjects design experiments. Halimbawa, ito yung tanong mo, ito yung experiment mo. There is a theory that rock, pop, and jazz music have potential have the potential to possibly affect self-esteem. As a psychologist, you would like to know which of the three genres can best cause increase in self-esteem. So you would like to establish a causal connection between the music genre and self-esteem. You would like to know which of the three music genres, pop, rock, and jazz, yung pinaka maganda sa pagpapataas ng self-esteem. So how would you do that in a within subjects design experiment? So again, kuha tayo ng isang grupo ng mga tao, let's say 30 people, and then what would we do? We are going to make them undergo all the levels of our IV. Kasi nga, within subjects design, eh, ba? So that 30 people will first listen to pop music, let's say for one week, and then let's get their self-esteem at the end of the week. And then they enter the next level. The same 30, this time will listen to rock music, and then at the end of the week, let's measure their self-esteem. And then the same 30, third week na to, no? The same 30, we listen to jazz music for one straight week. And then let's measure their self-esteem at the end of the week. And then what do we do? We are going to compare all those dependent variables kung sino ang pinakamataas. Kung anong condition yung pinakamataas ang self-esteem nila. Hypothetical result, let's say, we saw from the data that their self-esteem is the best during the jazz music condition. Diyan pinakamataas yung level of self-esteem nila. Therefore, you conclude that the best music genre to increase self-esteem is listening to jazz. Again, knowing the idea that you use a within subjects design, pwede ko na naman i-challenge yung finding na yan. Maybe, it's not the jazz music that increased their self-esteem. Right? Pwede kasing ganito ang nangyari. No? What would have happened here? Pwede ganito. Look at the data on the right. ba? Yung nakinig sila sa pop, yung self-esteem nila average 15. Yung nakinig sila sa rock, average nila 
average self-esteem nila 25. Nung nakinig sila sa jazz, yung average nila 30. So, lumabas na mukha nga yung jazz yung nagpataas nung kanilang self-esteem. But, it's possible, in Tagalog, posible, tumaas ang self-esteem ng dahil sa pakikinig sa jazz or posible rin na tumaas ang self-esteem nila dahil nakinig sila sa pop, rock, and jazz. I hope you get that. I hope you got those two possibilities. The first possibility is, yes, jazz itself increased their self-esteem. But it is also possible that it was not the jazz that increased their self-esteem. It's the fact that they listened to the combination of pop, rock, and jazz music. Diba? Kumbaga, parang pwede mo rin ipasok dito yung carryover effect. Eh. Diba? Baka kasi, habang yung mga participants mo gumagalaw across the different levels, yung epekto ng previous levels nag accumulate Yung epekto ng pop na, re- na, na, na experience nila sa self-esteem nila. Tapos nakinig sila ng rock. Yung effect ng rock nag-accumulate o pumatong doon sa if- effect ng pop music sa kanilang self-esteem. Kaya mas mataas, oh, from 15, nag-jump sa 25. And then, nakinig sila ng jazz. Posible yung effect ng jazz humalo o pumatong din doon sa effect ng rock and pop. Kaya, lumabas doon sa data, you have the highest self-esteem in the jazz condition, which is 30. But the fact is, it was not the jazz music itself that increased their self-esteem. Rather, it's the combination of pop, rock, and jazz music that increased their level of self-esteem. O, di ba? Malaking problema yan. Yan nga yung tinatawag nating order effect. Di ba? Kaya pinakamataas yung self-esteem mo in this experiment was not because of jazz music itself but because of the order that they experienced. Maybe it was the order of the music that increased their self-esteem. Tataas ang self-esteem mo kapag nakinig ka muna sa pop, nakinig ka muna sa rock, and then jazz. Yun yung nagpataas ng self-esteem and not jazz itself. The question now is, how do you rule out this possibility? Halimbawa, syempre, i-defend mo yung, yung results mo. Diba? Gusto mo talagang patunayan na hindi yung order yung nagpataas sa self-esteem ng participants ko, but it's the jazz music itself. How do you rule out the possibility of order effects? Ang sagot dyan, gamitin mo lahat ng possible orders of the IV levels. Ipakita mo sa experiment mo that even after you used all the possible orders of your IV levels, it will still appear that their self-esteem is the best when they listen to jazz. And how are you going to do that? Gagamit ka ng counterbalancing. Counterbalancing is a process in psychological experiments where we use all possible combinations of your different IV levels to rule out possible order effects. Halimbawa, going back to our hypothetical experiment, iririran natin, di ba? Ano ba yung mga possible orders ng music genre natin? Ganyan. Di ba? Yung, yung una kong example, pop, rock, and jazz yun eh. Pero, gusto mo nang i-rule out yung possibility ng order effect. So, what do you do? You use all the other combinations ng pop, rock, and jazz. So, gumamit ka ng uh, merong condition na rock, jazz, and pop, may condition na jazz, rock, pop, pop, jazz, rock, rock, pop, jazz, jazz, pop, rock. Naguluhan ba kayo? Oh. Basta yan yung all possible conditions of those three levels of IV. Maliwanag. Now, remember you have 30 participants here. Oh, ito medyo tricky dito. No? How are you going to assign the 30 participants across this different Um, combination of orders. Dito, pwede kang mag-apply ng random assignment. Okay? So, you use fishbowl technique. So, sa 30 participants, yung unang taong mabubunot mo will experience the pop, rock, jazz order. The second person goes to rock, jazz, pop. The third person goes to jazz, rock, pop, so on and so forth. Now, question. 
hindi ba naging between subjects design na to? Di ba sabi natin, in within subjects design, we don't use random assignment. Eh, bakit tayo nagra-random assignment sa isang within subjects design? So, naging between subjects design na ba? The answer is no. Because, remember, even if you assign, even if you randomly assign one participant in one order, they still experience all the levels. Di ba? Naka-experience ka pa rin ng pop, naka-experience ka pa rin ng rock, naka-experience ka pa rin ng jazz, kahit saan ka pumunta dyan sa, sa six na yan. So, it is still a within subjects design. Because they still experience all the levels in this experiment. Remember, in between subjects design, each participant will only experience one manipulation. They will only belong to one group. So, kung nasa condition 1 sila, hindi na sila mapupunta sa condition 2. Kasi, ibang grupo ng mga tao yung nasa condition 2 in a between subjects design. So, to answer that question, within subjects design pa rin ito. Okay? Now, how do we compute our dependent variable in using the system? Kukunin lang natin yung average. Diba? So, for example, in order 1, pop, rock, and jazz, o ano yung mean self-esteem sa pop? I-add mo yon sa mean self-esteem doon sa second. Mean self-esteem ng doon sa third. Diba? So, kunin mo lang yung, yung, yung average self-esteem ng lahat ng pop, ng lahat ng rock, ng lahat ng jazz in those different order combinations. So, kunin mo yung grand average. So, lahat ng pop, lahat ng rock, lahat ng jazz, ano ang average? Now, fast forward. Let's say, after doing that, your findings shows that jazz still has the highest level of self-esteem. Pwede mo pa rin bang ilaban na order effect yan? Pwede mo pa rin bang sabihin na hmm, hindi yung just yung nagpataas ng scores nila. It's the idea that they first listen to pop, rock, and jazz. Hindi mo na pwedeng gamitin yon Why? Because in the, in the adjustment we made, lahat ng potential orders doon sa levels natin, ginamit natin, and yet, it still appeared that jazz is the best in increasing people's self-esteem. So, na-rule out mo na yung possibility ng order effect. Maluhanag ba? Okay, I hope you got that. No, anyway, if you have any questions, you can just comment below para sa inyong mga katanungan or if you want something to be clarified. Ito naman yung limitation ng counterbalancing. No? Mahirap mag-counterbalancing kapag masyado kang maraming IV levels. Alright? Alimbawa, meron kang 4 IV levels. O, ilang possible orders yan? By the way, hindi ko pala nabanggit dito, no? How do you get the number of all possible orders given the number of your IV levels? Halimbawa, let's just keep it simple. Let's say you have three levels, yung pop, rock, and jazz. How many possible combinations are there? If you have three levels, pop, rock, and jazz, there are a total of six possible combinations. Tanong, paano mo nalaman yung six possible combinations? Uh, Iaano mo lang yan, no? I-3... And then, permutation. Nagigets nyo? So, alimbawa, 3 levels yun, no? Ang mangyayari dyan, 3 times 2 times 1. Magka-countdown ka lang, 3 times 2 times 1. Oh, 3 times 2 is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. So, that means there are 6 possible orders. That's why going back, ibalik ko lang. Ayan, no? Meron tayong 6 possible orders in kapag meron kang 3 conditions. Maliwanag. Kasi nga, 3 permutation. 3 times 2 times 1. It's 6. So, you can only imagine kung yung number of IV levels mo is 4. Ilang possible orders yon? 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So, ilan yon? 4 times 3 is 12. Times 2, 24. Times 1, 24. So, you will have 24 possible orders in an experiment with 4 levels of conditions. Maliwanag ba? So, mas marami kang IV levels, mas marami kang possible orders of combination ang mabubuo. Kaya, huwag na natin pahirapan ng buhay natin dito. Ang lesson dyan, eh, huwag mong damihan yung IV levels mo. As much as possible, let's keep it simple to 2 to 3. Okay na yung 2 to 3. Masyado nang marami yung 4 levels. Okay? Pero ito, 
just to just to give you additional information halimbawa hindi maiiwasan marami ka talaga ang IV levels sabihin nating lima di ba oh the good news here is according to experimental psychologist you don't need to get or to use all the possible orders in case you have so many orders okay halimbawa yung uh, sa four conditions ilan yon pag four conditions four times three twelve times two twenty four right Uh, sorry no dapat yata ito wait etong etong 36 this should be 24 no okay or teka lang ha oo sige let's make this 24 so out of 24 possible combinations hindi mo naman kinakailangan kunin o gamitin lahat nung lahat nung conditions na yon So, 4 times, hindi mo kinakailangan gamitin yung lahat ng 24 na yon. From the 24 possible orders of your IV levels, you can ju just get some of those 24 conditions. Again, tayo po lang tong 36 ha. Ayan, so, isipin nyo na lang 24 yan, no? So, how can you select? Out of that 24 possible orders, how can you select just some of the 24? Dito ka ngayon gagamit ng Latin square design. Sa Latin square design, meron niyang formula na ginagamit. Ganyan yan. 1, 2, and refers to uh, and refers to the number of IV levels you have in your experiment. 3, n minus 1, so that's 5 minus 1. 4, and then n minus 2, substitute nyo lang, n is 5, so that's going to be 3, so on and so forth. So, please memorize this formula. 1, 2, n, 3, n minus 1, 4, n minus 2, 5, n minus 3, 6, so on and so forth. Depende kung ilan nga yung IV levels nyo. So, let me demonstrate to you how can we select some of the orders doon sa maraming possible orders na mabubuo mo. Again, if you have five orders, or if you have, sorry, if you have five levels of your IV, ilang possible orders yon? Again, 5 permutation 5 times 4 20 times 3 60 times 2 120 times 1 120 so ibig sabihin you will have 120 possible orders if you have 5 levels of your IV so again sinasabi nga ng Latin square hindi mo kinakailangan gamitin yung lahat ng 120 na yon pili ka lang ng iba pili ka lang ng certain orders from that 120 by using the Latin square formula. So, paano natin gagawin yan? Gagawa ka ng uh, gagawa ka ng 5 by 5 table. So, kung ilan yung IV levels mo, yun din yung magiging size ng table mo. So, if you have 5 levels, 5 by 5 table. If you have 6 levels, 6 by 6 table. If you have 7 levels, 7 by 7 table. But for our purposes here, this is a 5 by 5 table, right? So, anong gagawin natin? I-apply mo na kaagad yung formula doon sa first row. Right? So, 1, 2. Bakit 5 yung pangatlong number? Because that's letter N. Remember, letter N refers to the, to the number of IV levels that you have in your experiment. 1, 2, 5, and then 4. And then, bakit 3 yan? N minus 2 kasi. ba? Diba? That's 5 minus 2 is 3. O, bakit hindi na natin tinuloy? Ano dapat sunod ng N minus 2? 3. Diba? Bakit hindi mo nilagay ng, nilagyan ng 3 yung, yung next row? Eh, kasi meron ka ng 3 eh. So, ibig sabihin, kapag may umulit na doon, hindi nakasama yung row na yon So, hanggang dyan na lang. 1, 2, 5, 4, and 3. Gets? So, after you apply the formula of the Latin square in the first row, ang gagawin mo, if you fill out mo na lang yung mga tables sa yung mga cells sa baba. So, uh, ganito lang yan. So going going to the first column, 1 2 3 4 5. I-add add one ka lang ng add one. Sa so, next column, 2 'yun, 'di ba? So magiging 3 4 5. Oops, 5 na. 'Yan na yung maximum level mo, 'di ba? Babalik ka ulit sa 1. So it becomes 2 3 4 5 1. And then you go to the third column, 5 1 2 3 4. 5, right? You go to the fourth column. 4, ituloy mo lang, 5. Oops, maximum yung 5. So, anong gagawin mo? Pupunta ka ulit sa 1. 1, 2, 3.
so on and so forth. Ganun lang. Hanggang sa mabuo mo na yung table na yan. Now, how are you going to use this table? Again, out of, ilan yung sinabi ko kanina, 120, no? Out of 120 possible orders in an experiment with 5 conditions, you can just use 5 orders. So, ano yung order 1 mo? Order 1 mo would be 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. So, there will be participants who will undergo your experiment with the following conditions. Condition 1, 2, 5, 4, 3. Meron ka na naman mga participants who will experience 2, 3, 1, 5, 4, 3, 4, 2, 1, 5, so on and so forth. So, napaka-convenient nito kasi out of possible 120 orders, pumapayag na yung Latin square design na lima lang yung gamitin mo. But then again, to avoid complications like this, kayo rin naman, di ba, ayaw nyo mamroblema ng ganyan, limit your IV levels. Huwag kayong gagawa ng isang IV level, ng isang IV na merong maraming levels. As much as possible, 2 to 3 levels would do. Okay? So, ang dami kong sinabi ngayon for this lecture. I think umabot tayo ng more than 1 hour. The summary. What are the different confounding variables that you need to deal with? If you are going to use a between subjects design or a, or a within subjects design, the following. Between subjects design, ang problema mo lang talaga dyan, unequal group characteristics. Yan lang. Solution dyan, random assignment or manual matching. Mas marami kang problema sa within subjects design. Fatigue effect, practice effect, carryover effect, order effect, pero bawat problema na meron dyan, merong solusyon. Okay? So, the thing is, again, um, for your post-lecture assignment, this time I would like to talk I, I would like you to talk as a group so mag meeting meeting kayo on your own time ito yung gagawin nyo given the topic that you want to experiment on by the way dapat habang tumatakbo yung oras meron na kayong mga ideas or topics that you want to experiment on ha? O, o, hindi yung kung kailan mag original experiment dun pa lang kayo mag iisip ng topic ngayon pa lang mag play around na kayo ng mga different ideas that you want to experiment on so anyway Given the topic that you want to experiment on, design a within subject design experiment and a between subject design experiment with that topic. Okay? So, gawin nyo to as a group. Anyway, meron akong MS Word na i-upload in our group to, to formalize this post-lecture assignment. But this is the idea. As a group, you are going to design two experiments on one topic. So, meron kayong one topic that you want to experiment on and then you are going to design an experiment using within subject design and between subjects design. Gusto ko makita yung procedures on how you plan to run the experiment. So, isusulat nyo yung procedures part ng experiment ninyo. No? Kasi doon, doon natin nakikita eh kung yung experiment ba is a within subjects design or a between subjects design based on the procedures on how to run the experiment and also in the procedures part dito ko rin makikita how you plan to get rid or to avoid possible confounding variables that we discussed a while ago so halimbawa gumamit ka ng yung design mo within subjects design in your procedures part dapat makita ko how are you going to deal with fatigue effect practice effect, carry over effect, order effect, so on and so forth. Okay? So again, I'm going to upload a formal document on this. So medyo technical itong assignment nyo, nyo na ito, but again, this is by group. So you need to begin talking with your group mates starting this lecture video. So again, the, the topic that we have right now was very technical. If you have any questions or hindi pa rin klaro, na may, may hindi klaro na concept, you can just message doon sa ating lecture video or message me via animal space. Okay, so thank you for listening. Until the next lecture video, thank you and God.